Hey everybody, it's Allie and welcome to our YNR chat for Sunday, July 24th, 2016. It's good to be back live videoing in person. <laughs> but I have a quick housekeeping note for you. Um, you. If you are watching the YNR chat video this week, you might notice that the quality is not quite as crisp as it usually is. It's not you, it's me. We had a massive internet service provider outage here and I we just got back up maybe an hour ago. I've been rushing to watch the rest of my YNRs, rushing to put together YNR chat and get comments ready and read all that stuff. And uh, I'm, what I think I'm gonna do is upload the video in a lower quality just to make sure it gets uploaded fast. I'm worried that if I do the full quality video, it'll take forever, and just in case it goes out again, I mean, it was out for a long time, uh, and it, I almost didn't get why in our chat pulled together. I was really afraid it wasn't gonna happen this week, so uh, I figure low quality is better than no video, no why in our chat, and hopefully it'll get uploaded uh, sooner than 30 years. I'm hopefully the video will be uploaded before Adam gets out of prison. 30 years? I cannot even fathom that he took a 30 year plea deal. I wasn't expecting that. In my head, I thought plea deal maybe would put him somewhere around the 10, 15 year mark, something a little closer to what Victor's sentence ended up being. But 30 years Adam was sentenced to federal prison this week. It was absolutely shocking to me. Part of me just, I can't even believe that he would go with that deal. I wish that he just would have gone through with the trial and then we could have found out all the other pieces of the puzzle and got a retrial. But part of the thing he had to do with this plea deal was sort of admit guilt or he was admitting that he's pleading guilty and it was just it, it was just weird like it didn't seem very Adam-esque to me there was something so absolutely defeated and heartbreaking and depressing about the entire first half of the week I mean really I think Monday and Tuesday's show I just felt blah watching him being ripped away from his family seeing him torn apart from Chelsea and Connor and saying his goodbyes and getting thrown into jail, who, who, who knows what's going to end up happening to him. If I was Chelsea, I swear I would have slit Victor's throat with that scalpel too. <laughs> was anybody else kind of rooting for her to do it? I mean, I know that's wrong and terrible, but there was a part of me that was watching my screen going, do it, Chelsea, just do it, do it. <laughs> Get that old man. I mean, this is all Victor's fault. I can. I was completely identifying with Chelsea's desperation in that moment. She was wild-eyed, man. She looked like Chloe in that moment. There was something that kind of reminded me because we've seen that desperation on Chloe's face more than once, and Chelsea was just. I mean, she, she was absolutely uh, she had it kicked up to a whole nother level i loved watching her hold the scalpel on him and try to get him to confess to everything he did it's victor's fault that adam is there in the first place and she did get him to kind of confess at least confess enough to say that he wanted to teach Adam a lesson. It all kind of got away from him and that he doesn't really want Adam to be there anymore. I mean, he, this wasn't his intention. He wasn't expecting things to turn out like this, but they did. This is all Victor's fault. Adam is sitting in prison for a crime that he did not commit for 30 years. And I, I don't know what makes Victor so sure that he's just gonna be able to wave a wand and that's all gonna go away. This is incredibly serious. I mean, Anita's already having talks with Chelsea about moving on. Can you even believe how inappropriate that conversation was? I, 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 I like Anita better than I used to, but the fact that she was kind of pushing Chelsea on the day, I think, that her husband was convicted to sort of maybe, I don't know, it would almost kind of seem like she was pushing for her to get a new life somewhere else and sort of forget about Adam and maybe hook up with a new 
guy, which is always Anita's M.O. <laughs> but that was so inappropriate. Um, I was glad to see that Chelsea was smart enough to at least record the conversation with Victor because I think what she was really trying to do was get him to tell her where the real evidence is. She's not going to give up on her husband. She's not just going to allow him to sit there and rot for 30 years. Chelsea's going to continue this investigation, whether she has to do it on her own or with the help of uh, who knows how many other people. And, and it's just, I, I was so into Chelsea this week because I felt her pain, I felt her journey, I felt, of course, that desperation, and she really, just brought it. The actress was incredible. That scene where they pulled away from her and she was just collapsed, crying in a puddle on the floor. The weight of her world just com completely on her shoulders of her life, of her son's life, of Adam's life. It's really all up to Chelsea now. And I think we're going to see her stepping up and really taking charge within the next couple of weeks. The thing that I guess I wasn't really totally thinking about was the fact that there would ultimately be a moment where Victor and Adam are in jail together, which was kind of surprising. I guess when this all started, I hadn't imagined that that's where it was going to go, but Victor and Adam have their very first uh, talk with one another inside jail, and Victor again also kind of confesses to Adam, or Adam sort of guesses where Victor's head was when he put this whole plan plan of blackmail or of blackmail and uh, framing into action and so Adam really called Victor out and said I know I'm, I'm guessing that you thought this was all just going to be to teach me a lesson and that you'd pull back at the last minute but somebody double crossed you who was it of course Victor doesn't give up any information but I really liked that Adam had Victor's number in that moment the only thing that Victor really said was I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna help you get out too. Don't worry, son. I'm gonna get you out of this. Am I supposed to be impressed by that, Victor? Am I supposed to be loving Victor right now for the fact that he's ultimately gonna come to Adam's rescue? I'm assuming that somehow, maybe, Victor's gonna be involved in, in having a change of heart and helping Adam get out of this. He would have to. How could you live with this on your conscience? I'm gonna assume that at some point we've got to experience Victor's redemption and that maybe getting Adam out of jail will be part of it, but it doesn't feel like it right now. I am not impressed by Victor's pledge to help Adam out. I'm not impressed with Victor and his attitude at all. I loved that Adam just looked at Victor and said, oh, well, there's one little piece that you forgot to count on. You, sir, have just made a dangerous enemy out of my wife, Chelsea. And Victor just blows that off just blows it off as if it means nothing. In fact, he even says, oh, she'll get over it. She'll be fine. Her husband's in jail for 30 years. Her family's destroyed. She'll get over it. He's, Victor is so dismissive of Chelsea in that moment that I just, I'm flashing back to the scalpel scene and just thinking, do it. Just do it, Chelsea. <laughs> you know you want to. But I will say this. Chelsea has a weapon of information because here we are over at the Newman family with everything being nice and cozy. Nikki supporting Victor, thinking, oh, this is her hero. He's back. We're going to, we're ultimately going to get back together and everything's going to be like it should be. Well, Nikki is in for a rude awakening very soon. Chelsea is here insisting that Adam is innocent just as much as Nikki is insisting that Victor's innocent and only one of them's right. Chelsea has this information, by the way, that Victor tried to blackmail Adam into working at Newman Enterprises in exchange for these real pages of the diary. All Chelsea has to do is tell Nikki that information and all, who knows, maybe Nikki will go back on trial and, and recant her recant of her testimony <laughs> against Victor. Nikki's going to be crushed She's going to be ticked. Her entire little fantasy bubble is going to be burst immediately. And 
If Chelsea is not the one who ends up telling Nikki about it, Dylan has that information too. Dylan confronted Victor this week and says, I know about your offer to Adam. So there, are, it's Nikki and Victor's little world or Nikki's little fantasy world is on the shakiest of grounds, yet the family bonds together for the big trial date. Victor is requesting a reduced sentence and the family is going to bond together to, uh, to, to help get him out of jail. By the way, what do you know, Meredith's father is presiding over Victor's trial. I would almost think, I would want to think that that would give him an advantage, but not necessarily. I think from the previews we saw on Monday, having Meredith's dad involved in this at all, and also given the previous interaction that Victor had with him, Victor kind of nosing up in his life, I think there's a bad taste for Victor Newman left in that judge's mouth. And so I don't think necessarily that the family bonding together <clears throat> is going to give Victor the result right here and now that he's expecting, but still the family's expecting it. I mean, everybody seems so sure that Victor's going to get out. Um, Victoria and Nick and Nikki were all meeting at the athletic club prior to the trial, and I gotta tell you, I was real happy to see Phyllis walk up in there and bust up their little love section. Don't expect Phyllis to be on board with getting Victor out of prison and she tells them all so. Victoria and Nikki were both very sort of snide and uppity and sure of themselves, but the moment that really stuck with me from that scene was Phyllis's interaction with Nick. I loved her point to him. Hey, I'm the mother of your child. Look at what your father did to me. It's such a big gap in in the writing, I think, that Phyllis and Nick have no relationship now. We occasionally will see them in a scene together uh, talking about Summer, but Phyllis and Nick had a long-term, long-time, deep relationship. It is a little surprising that maybe Phyllis hasn't really talked to Nick about what Victor did with Marco and, and, and the fact that she's the victim of this. And if it was talked about, it certainly wasn't a point that was driven home. So I liked that Phyllis actually talked to Nick about that and said it. I liked that Phyllis defended herself with Jack too, because of course Jack comes in and begs Phyllis not to get involved in Victor's trial. Don't go to it. Don't testify with it. Don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. And she has to yet again, kind of defend her position to Jack. I was annoyed with him in that scene. Anybody else? Anybody? Anybody? I, I just think, why Jack? When your marriage is on such rocky ground, do you even bother to talk her down? Phyllis is going to do what Phyllis is going to do. If she feels like it is to her best interest to go to that trial, she's going to do it. So you just better consider this a sore subject that y'all can't talk about and move on and don't mention it again. I just, I, she completely, of, of course, of course she's going to ignore his advice. I mean, there's no point in even him saying it. Uh, I was and I was just, I was bothered by him trying. I understand that he's trying to rope her in and bring her maybe to a place of a little more zen, so the zen place that he's come to. He wants to bring Phyllis there too, but it is just not gonna happen. Um, pretty much, I think that, you know, the Newmans say so, and so they think that Victor's gonna get out of jail. They all have their, they go to the trial. We have one by one, the family's testimony. It was really hard to watch. Uh, it, there was something about it that was just so lame, seeing Victor, or excuse me, um, seeing Victoria and Nick and Nikki sitting there on the stand, looking at Victor in the eyes, and just taking back all of their pride taking back everything that they've said, everything that they know 
about their father, all of the feelings that have built up for years and years, just one by one sort of eating their words. It had to be incredibly satisfying for Victor, but it was incredibly pathetic to me. I agree that they should not have aired their personal problems in court. It was probably the wrong move for them to testify against him in the first place. They should have just let the evidence stand for itself. Their opinion didn't need to be factored into it anyway. And now here we are revisiting the trial, the argument of Victor's new attorney, who is not Michael, random guy who we don't know, is arguing that the family's testimony had an undue influence on the original trial. And so now if they give their altered opinion that maybe that would alter the sentence or alter the opinion of the court. Uh, but it's just absolutely ridiculous to me. It was hard to watch them just cowering at this point. Nikki even blamed her alcoholism for the fact that she testified the way she did. It, it was humiliating. Did you guys find that? I just thought, where are your backbones, Newman family? Come on. You're Newmans! And they just kowtow to Victor. They kowtowed to him today or at the trial like they always do. I was glad that Phyllis showed up in the previous For Monday show. She marches into that courtroom and is about to say exactly what she thinks, which I was just thrilled to see somebody needed to get in there and break up that kumbaya session. I was going to be really sad if Mariah moved out of Sharon's house. And not that Mariah doesn't have a right to her own life, and it would be entirely understandable if Mariah wanted to go out and get a new life. Although I will say I would have, if I were Mariah, I would not have involved Kevin. I just would have gone out and gotten an apartment. She has a job now. She has plenty of resources to just move out on her own. She doesn't have to bounce between her mom and her ex-boyfriend. I again would like to see somebody have some more pride. Uh, but I, so I was, have been upset if Mariah would have moved out because she felt unwelcomed by Sharon. And I will admit, it feels like, and at the beginning of the week and for the past couple of weeks, it did feel like Sharon didn't really want Mariah there. Mariah is this constant reminder of this big, big secret that Sharon is carrying on her shoulders every minute of every day, lying to Dylan about. And I, I would have been sad if Sharon just let her go. I mean, Mariah almost left. She tells Sharon, I just don't think I should be here. It's not healthy for you. I don't want to cause you any more stress. So Mariah packs her bags. She goes to the trouble of securing a, her old room back with Kevin. He gives her the security key to get into his house. But there's also this element of Mariah realizing that she can go back to Kevin's house, but she's not really going back to the way things were with Kevin. Things have changed. Kevin's moved on with Natalie now. I mean, they're going to be all smoochy face in the living room. Is that really a situation that you want to expose yourself to? So I was glad that at the very last minute, as Mariah's taking the last of her things, Sharon convinces her to stay. Hopefully, hopefully that, you know, she decides to stay and, and, and stay there. She's, she is a part of the family. I thought it was a really important turning point in that relationship between Sharon and Mariah. I liked that Sharon was trying to be funny. What was, she said, you know, we can listen to hip hop, uh, DJ JD or something. <laughs> it was kind of cute and dorky and funny and charming, but more importantly, just saying to Mariah, it hurts too much to not have you here. You're my daughter. And I think this is what I've been waiting to hear Sharon say for all of these weeks. I mean, Mariah is a gift. 
she didn't know that she had this other twin. It's a, Not only is it a gift of a daughter you didn't know you had, but it's this direct line connection to a daughter that you lost. Mariah's Cassie's twin. I mean, Sharon has agonized over Cassie's death every day since it happened, and here Mariah is this connection to her, and to watch Sharon kind of blow it off or downplay it has been has been really hard. Um, and also just the imbalance of power in their relationship. It always kind of seems like Mariah's being motherly and Sharon's being the irresponsible teenager. Uh, and and it's a, it's a weird dynamic between them. I really would like to see their relationship be a little bit more healthy. And now here's the thing. I think that healing Sharon and Mariah's relationship is really important because that way hopefully Y&R is not going to move in a direction of Mariah being the one to blow up the secret. That's kind of what I predicted when this all started, but Mariah has really stayed true to her mother, to her word, uh, is trying to do the best she can to protect Sharon in the best way that she knows how right now, and so I kind of don't want Mariah to be involved in blowing up the whole big paternity secret, we can leave that to someone else. I mean, frankly, Sage's diary pages are still out there, and as you pointed out two weeks ago or a week ago, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, there's a very good possibility that the paternity secret that Sage has been keeping is on those lost diary pages, and that's why Victor snatched them in the first place. So if Sage's diary holds the key to Adam's freedom and to the paternity secret reveal. Chloe's the one that has them, and we're probably only a couple of episodes away from Kevin finding out that not only is Chloe in town, but she's the one that's got these diary pages. Kevin ended up accidentally getting involved in that Sharon Mariah situation anyway. He had identified it was an unhealthy situation. He was trying to get Mariah out of it. He knows something weird is going on, and if he discovers Chloe and discovers the diary pages, he's gonna know Sharon's secret, and he might not be so nice as to keep that secret. He might very well blow that whole thing sky high, and I kind of wouldn't mind that being the case. I just want it to be somebody other than Mariah. But let's talk about Chloe for just a second. We didn't even see her this entire week. I, I don't think there was one single Chloe sighting all week, uh, which was a little bit disappointing. I like Chloe. I'm happy that she's back. Last week's poll question was yay or nay on Chloe's return. You guys tell me. 59% of you said, yay, welcome back, Chloe, and 41% said, nope, just not feeling it. I kind of think that, and just from judging from the comments, I think some of the nay to, or the negative part of Chloe being back is that it resurrects the whole Delia storyline, and I do agree 100% about that. I think there's a part of me that wouldn't mind if I never heard about any of that again. It was such a dark part of YNR storytelling, and I would like to not go there anymore. Um, not that I want to forget Delia and forget what happened, but it's just, it's so sad. It was never one of my favorite storylines, and it's just something that I think is a bummer and that maybe people don't want to go back to. It was, it's just, we're never going to come to a resolution on it. It was something horrible that happened. Adam's not the only one to blame, uh, and, and, it's, and it's just, I think it opens up a whole big can of worms that I think maybe viewers are just not a hundred percent sold on on uh, on on getting back into. But it's hard to have the character of Chloe without having all that baggage that that comes along with with her. So I don't know. I'm I get I get both responses to that poll question. I would like to maybe see a newer version of Chloe. Maybe we can maybe we can do something to modify the the Chloe a little bit. But she's crazy right now. She's off her rocker. Although, I will say, she had a chance 
to burn those diary pages, and she didn't. Actually, I guess we did see Chloe, because that was that had to have been early in the week, so I take that back. <laughs> All right, that wasn't last week, that was this week. She had a chance sitting there in her hotel room to burn those diary pages, and she didn't do it. I think it was not uh, something that she was doing out of conscience, like a, like a, a attack of conscience kind of thing. I think she was like, eh, I'll save this bit of fun for later. So now we just need Chelsea or Dylan or Kevin to like beat down that hotel room door, knock all of those wigs off of the desk and snatch those diary pages of truth. At the beginning of the week, I was like, all right, Summer, she's wising up. Very cool. This is the kind of summer that I want to see. She has this fake fight that only she knows is fake <laughs> with Victoria at the beginning of the week. And it was a situation where Victoria had kind of disparaged Luca and Summer made this big production out of defending him. And we didn't learn until later when she revealed to Victoria that she had actually wised up about Luca and she was just staging that whole fight so that he would think that she was still on his side and she could continue to get information out of him. I'm watching Summer stand up to Victoria thinking, if only Summer were actually this bold. I really liked it. I thought it was great. I thought maybe we were seeing a turning point in the character and I mean, well, she goes back to Luca and it's just like it all ends up getting dashed. He he ends up first of all suggesting that Summer should somehow dethrone Victoria and take her place and become the new CEO of Newman Enterprises, which is laughable. He thinks that he can control her and so he can control the company if she's in control of the company. And he like like uh, off it's just I can't even believe that she didn't see this coming from a mile away. I mean, it's absolutely insane to me that she fell for his whole trick at any point and then she realizes that he is a uh, like not genuine, not truly in, in love with her, and that she would stay with him for any extra amount of time, that she would give him any more time of day is ridiculous to me. I mean, he, he actually has this <laughs> attack of conscience. <laughs> he has one. Uh, and he confesses to her, this is so dumb, that he, you know, he was using her. Like, she doesn't even bust him out. He decides, I think probably as soon as he realizes that the heat is on him, he decides to confess to Summer that, I gotta tell you something, uh, here's the thing, I was using you up until yesterday, but then I was in bed last night sleeping and I all of a sudden realized that I really love you, so we cool? What? <laughs> what? I mean, first of all, I felt like him confessing at all was just more of his ploy. I thought he was doing it just to try to do a little bit of damage control. Second of all, you just figured this out yesterday. <laughs> So yesterday you did not love Summer, or yesterday you did not love me, today you love me. <laughs> and then for him to transition into, but can we still like be a couple? It's foolish, it's, it, uh, 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 he's got to be an egomaniac that he would think it would work, but here's the thing, it did. I mean, she, at first she tries to play it off like, um, I don't know if I'm gonna take you back or not. I have to think about this. I mean, I love you too. Um, and uh, yeah, you did completely lie to me and screw me over, but then you said you love me. He, she's like Nikki. <laughs> Fine to make excuses for this man who is obviously no good for her. And when she puts up a little bit of resistance, he tells her that, well, because of a run-in he had with Nick saying, Nick saying, do you really want to ostracize Summer from her family? When Victor gets out of jail, he's going to disown her. And if you really care about her, then you'll just leave. And then Luca comes back to Summer and says, I'm just going to leave, which I still feel like was a ploy. To, to me, it sounds like he was almost playing with her 
saying, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna leave, and that completely drew her back in. She wants, apparently, what she can't have. I mean, the second he said he was ready to go out the door, she is practically on her hands and knees begging him not to go. She's literally yelling his name as he's walking out the door. Have some self-respect, Summer. What a whim. It was like beginning of the week. Oh, Summer could be awesome. End of the week, back to square one. Summer is a total wimp again. I mean, get a spine. Can someone in the Newman family get a spine? If Luca lied to you and manipulated you once, he'll do it again. It's, it's hard to believe I'm going to say this, but for once, Nick, the father, a Newman father, is right. Sometimes I watch Jack and I think that I understand where Phyllis is coming from because I don't recognize this man. I don't know who this man is who's standing in front of me. It's like not Marco, but it's not Jack Abbott. It's some other weird third version of him. How can he be such a fool in love? I can't, it's an, it's, these people are blind. These people are blinded by love. Can we just make a list of all of the people who are making foolish decisions and not seeing things that are right in front of them? Jack, Nikki, Summer, Dylan. I mean, the list could just go on. This town is, is is full of a bunch of chumps but I was really sad that Jack is lamenting the fact that his wife has moved out on him he goes to his brother for support and tells Billy for the first time Billy learns that Phyllis is living at the athletic club I was surprised that Billy didn't say, oh, really, what's the room number? <laughs> you go write that down. I mean, in that moment, and Jack probably wouldn't have noticed. He would have just given him the room number, maybe given him a set of keys. Here, go sleep with my wife. He might as well just have handed him the key to the room. Ridiculous. And I think to myself as I'm watching this, how can Billy not feel guilty? I mean, I get guilt from Phyllis. We're seeing a lot of Phyllis's guilt. I get almost no guilt from, from Billy. There was maybe one moment where there was a shot of his face where he seemed a little bit like, yeah, you're a better brother than me, Jack. But it didn't stop him. Didn't stop him at all from going right to Phyllis's room and uh, pressuring her some more. I mean, first he gives Jack misleading advice and says, nah, give Phyllis her space, while he inserts himself right into that space and goes to Phyllis's room and not only tries to pressure her to make a decision between he and Jack, but starts kissing up on her too. Why is it that Phyllis feels so guilty and Billy, and I don't get that from Billy. I feel like that's a hole. That's kind of like a hole in the writing that maybe needs to be addressed. Phyllis is married to the man, but that's your brother, dude. You've known him your entire life. You share your you share blood. You're both John Abbott's son. I think they should bring John Abbott back to smack some sense <laughs> into Billy. I just I don't get how he can continue to do this and be so aggressive with her. And she doesn't say no. I mean, he walks in the door. She puts up the tiniest little bit of resistance, but she also has on this red jacket with this bustier that looks like, I can't believe you would wear that to work. The jacket and bustier that Phyllis was wearing to work and to the hotel room. I'm like, I can't believe that that is acceptable business attire at Jabot. It was so breasty. It just, it looked like it was lingerie underneath the jacket and Billy noticed it too it was a literally maybe 60 seconds before he was kissing on her when he got into that hotel room and she just lets him she just lets him it the fact that she gives in so immediately I mean uh, Billy was telling her last week that it's over between them if you can't choose between me and Jack then it's over between us and he stomps out and she throws up just a little argument about that she pretends to be mad at him for just a little bit and then gives in it makes it hard for me to believe that Phyllis is there just to take time to herself that's all she says I mean of course Jack knocks on the door while Billy's in the room I mean Jack's walked into Billy's place 
to, to the mansion without knocking at all, like twice this week, literally twice. Jack just walked through the door. Phyllis and he could, and Billy could have been in, in in a compromising situation. Why, you know? And, and he just would have seen it. But uh, Jack comes in. Billy has to hide in in the bathroom at, at her suite, and she begins to give Jack the same old song and dance about how she needs to have time to herself. And yes, I think some of obviously what she was saying was so that Billy would hear it and she was getting a little bit of her backbone in that moment but at the same time it's like why how can you say that you just want to have this time to yourself to figure it out and know who you want and know who you are and then you give in to Billy so easily she doesn't throw up any resistance all of the resistance is on Jack pushing Jack away I guess it's hard for me to identify with this in a way because I pretty much am a person who usually knows what I want. I, I suppose maybe when I was younger, maybe there were some instances where I didn't, but at this stage in life, I, I know what I want and I just do that. <laughs> and it's hard to believe that Phyllis really truly doesn't know what she wants. Although I suppose what she wants is both. But it's hard for me to continue to believe her and support her when she's acting so victim-y, yet she's being so villainy. You know, it's like it's such a weird, um, it's such a weird mix coming from her. And I, I want to connect, but shoot. <sighs> It's not, it's, it's just not easy. I, Jack, this also really ticked me off, found out that the jet, the private Jabot jet, jet that was scheduled to take Phyllis to Montreal during her weekend with Billy never left the tarmac. She didn't take that jet. And Jack's mind immediately goes to, I think Phyllis is lying to me. In fact, I think that was the opener of Thursday's show. Jack, a close up on Jack's face saying, I think Phyllis is lying to me. Were we all watching that scene and going, uh, yeah. <laughs> we had to have collectively been screaming at our screens, yeah, Jack, Phyllis is lying to you, you big lughead. <laughs> Oh, of course. He uh, his mind jumps to she she was cheating on me, which is the correct assumption to have. And he confronts her about it. And what does she do? She lies and makes Jack think that it's his fault for not trusting her enough. Oh, I just took, I flew commercial. How I can't, I can't believe you would even think that I was lying to to you. That is the ultimate of emotional manipulation. That is just cruel that she would turn around and make him think that it's him when she was doing something wrong. It's just, you don't trust me enough. Ugh, that really got up under my skin. Phyllis was grating on me a little bit this week, as was Jack and as was Billy. But uh, to make Jack look like this big of a fool, could someone just put this man out of his misery already? Is anybody else getting the vibe that Billy and Victoria are totally going to be getting back together soon? I don't know if Jack and Phyllis are going to get back together, but I keep seeing these little hints that Billy and Victoria are going to hook up. First of all, I guess Travis is like gone. I had no idea. Anna had left me a voicemail last week or I would never have known this, but I guess Travis really did get in his boat and sail off into the sunset. Why, why was that so fast? Why is he gone? I we were work I was watching that. I mean, the, they were Travis and Victoria becoming a cute little couple and now all of a sudden he's just completely gone. I get I I I would have preferred Travis to stick around. I'd rather see Victoria re, you know be with Travis than reunite with Billy at this point. I have no interest really in seeing Billy and Victoria together yet. I kind of think they're going to bond over this whole brash and sassy thing. So um, uh, Victoria comes stomping over to his house this week and says, I can't believe you would sell Brash and Sassy. And Billy doesn't know anything about any of this. He says, I, I didn't sell it, but if, if something went wrong, don't worry, I'm going to get it back. He has this line where he looks at her and says, it's never too late. And I, I, of course, I was reading into that. That, that to me says these two people are going to get back together. But immediately, <laughs> Billy says, wait a minute, 
this had to have been a hostile takeover, and I think I know who it is. Who should come walking in the door at exactly that moment? But Kane, Kane walks through the mansion like he owns the place, and Billy just punches first and asks questions later. It was like, not even gonna bother to ask Kane if he and maybe Jill were involved in it. Billy just assumes. He just freaking punches Kane, sucker punches him right into his face, and I'm not gonna lie. Kane was like extra hot the way he chuckled at Billy and then just automatically comes back and punched him and then he just does this kind of little like neck cock he cocks his neck a little bit like it was just like he gets punched and then he kind of comes up chuckles punches Billy and then like yeah <laughs> It was hot. <laughs> I, I tell you, to be honest, that was probably my favorite part of the entire week. I thought, awesome. Go, Kane. Uh, go, baby. I mean, first of all, I think I'm mad at Billy right now. I don't, I, for so many reasons, but I, I was mad, feeling mad at Billy, and then Kane punches him, and I was happy about that, and then I was like, ooh, he just looked good right there. <laughs> Kane just looks good. And he had, like, personality about him. He was said, you know, this is not fine. You know what? Yeah, Jill did take over Brash and Sassy, and I'm gonna run it. Oh, by the way, this isn't the first time she's ripped placed you with me. Can you believe he even said that? And then he had the nerve to comment on the paint color as he was walking out the door. I was like, I love Diva Kane. <laughs> this is great. Why are we not seeing more of this Kane every single day? YNR has been wasting him. He's such a good character. He has so much potential. And I just want to see more of this. He went back to the athletic club and told Lily that he's not only helped Jill do this take thing but Jill wants him to head up the new company and I was so happy for him I thought maybe Lily was gonna be mad about it but I wish Lily would get out of the athletic club how great would it be if Kane and Lily ran brash and sassy together and we actually saw it I guess Chancellor Technically, the company chancellor purchased Brash and Sassy. So we could do like a chancellor office for Kane and maybe get Lily up in there. I just think that would be so neat. I'd like to see them together. Now, the, other, the problem is, though, that Jill shows back up in the previous for Monday's show and tells Kane and Billy that she wants them to work together at Brash and Sassy, which could also be good though, because there's a rivalry there. We could see them going at it. I think if you throw Lily into maybe modeling or doing something fun and, and creative with the cosmetics, that would be make some fun storylines. Um, but I just don't think that Billy's gonna go for it. I mean, Jill wants them to work together, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. Um, I think there's a very slim possibility that Billy would choose to work with Kane over Jack's deal to go work at Jabot. Jack said, hey, sorry you lost your company. Why don't you come to Jabot and work with, and sleep with, I mean, work with my wife. <laughs> I'm going to assume that there's no way Billy would want to pass that opportunity up. In so many ways, it feels like YNR is wrapping things up, like tying up loose ends. I noticed this week for the first time that we are seeing Mal Young build as the executive producer, the new executive producer on the show, and I'm feeling it this week. There is something about this week of shows that felt new. It felt like they were wrapping up loose ends and trying new things. And one really good example of that was Hillary and Devon getting along. I mean, he's sitting there reading her tabloid gossip while she's in her hospital bed and they're actually laughing together. It's the first time I've seen both of them smiling in a room together in so long. The negative part of it is that we're also seeing Dr. Neville get sidelined. They're telling him they don't want him working on Hillary's case anymore. Your treatments aren't working. They brought back uh, Leslie's husband, Dr. S B Barton. Barton. <laughs> I was trying to pull that one from memory. They brought him back and now Hillary is doing a conventional treatment for her problems, which voila, seemed to be working just fine. She is doing so well that they were able to release her send her home and this devastates 
Dr. Neville. He realizes that the good he wanted to do is no longer, he's no longer able to do it. He has failed in his mission. He tells Ashley that he just called the FDA and confessed that he was the one who uh, who rigged the results or paid the lab tech blah 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 all along, which is unfortunate because he's taking a fall for something Hillary did. I don't know if he sees that as balancing things out, if he harmed her, but Ashley is going to be off the hook for that. Neville is probably going to go to jail for that. Um, and, and Hillary just, I suppose, returns to normal? Is that... Is that it? I don't know. I'm sad to see Dr. Neville go. No. Plus, it leaves Ashley free romantically, if you know what I mean. Here's the thing. This week, Stitch and Abby got a house. <laughs> We saw a bedroom scene with Stitch and, did I say Ashley? Because I meant Abby. Stitch and Abby apparently have a bedroom now, which is really rare because there are no sets in Genoa City anymore, ever. Anybody who has sex usually has sex in the athletic club. So something special's coming if YNR built a set for Stitch and Abby of all people. Me and my suspicious soap opera long time watching mine sees a brand new bedroom and assumes that it probably means that Ashley and Stitch will be sleeping together in that bedroom very, very soon. <laughs> He's with Abby for now, but I, I just can't stop thinking that uh, Stitch and Ashley are going to ramp back up, which is really sad because I I really have started to like Abby a lot better than, I mean, she was she's never been one of my favorites. She's in fact probably been my least favorite, but it, it was really hard heartbreaking to watch her trying to connect with her husband. I mean, they managed to make love and she mentions afterwards that, hey, maybe we should think about having a family again. And it was just like, maybe not the best timing. A stitch he got out of bed. He got out of that room with his clothes in his hand. He didn't even get dressed. He ran out of his own bedroom with his shoes and pants and shirt in hand like the place was on fire. He could not get away from her in that situation fast enough. He makes up some excuse, says that he's going to work, and then we see him at the coffee house later. I hate to see him pulling away from her so hard instead of just communicating because she tries to address it again the next day and he bolts. He just, he will not talk about it. And I, I do understand both of these sides. I think that Stitch is feeling the weight of everything that went wrong with his son, Max, the, that it would feel like a betrayal to just move on and have some new kid just because his, his current kid is going with, through these problems. Not only that, but seeing him sitting there amongst all of the baby gifts they received, uh, on the, she, she miscarried at her baby shower. And, that's something that they haven't necessarily been able to work through together and move on from. But at the same time, I, while I have empathy for Stitch, I have empathy for Abby. This is a woman who's just trying to save her marriage. And that's my question for you this week is, is this, is this marriage really salvageable? Should Abby and Stitch stay together and try to start a family? How do you feel about this couple? YRChat.com is where you can cast your vote on this week's poll. Should Abby and Stitch stay together and try to start a family? I'd love to know what you guys think about that and feel free to leave some comments on that topic too. I hope we see more of that next week. I want to know where, I actually do want to know where this one's going. I've had enough paranoia for one day. <laughs> that was a Mariah line from last week. She, Mariah, the woman who lives with Sharon, <laughs> she has had enough paranoia for a lifetime. <laughs> so quite a few people guessed that it was Mariah who said that last week. Bonnie, Gina, Tanya, Nancy, Troy, Jamie, Edith, Rachel, and Sharita all got it right. Congratulations, you guys. Very, very good catch. Um, I have a new Who Said It quote for you this week if you think you're ready for it. Are you ready to guess who said, 
I am ready to serve all your needs. <laughs> Whyourchat.com is where you can leave your guests if you think you know one guest per person. Don't say, well, it could be this person, that person, or another person. You have to get it right in one and uh, only one per person, please. <laughs> Whyourchat.com, I'm ready to serve all your needs. Let's read some comments. I was so afraid I wasn't gonna get to pull these together because of the internet issue. So I'm just gonna do kind of a short version. I had to kind of like quickly look through and see which ones to pick. First I have to say, Mary sent me a message uh, to let me know that Dr. Neville's last day is actually July 27th, which is this upcoming Wednesday. So next Wednesday is gonna be the last of my beloved Dr. Neville. Ugh, if See, it's kind of like Kane. If Why if Wyanard does more with the character, it makes you love them. And, and it's been pretty clear that they've been gravitating away from Dr. Neville for the past several months, really. Um, they just didn't they just didn't make a push. But who knows? Maybe he could come back. I'm gonna leave my fingers crossed and hope that he will return. Uh, Ellen left me a comment at whyrchat.com saying, doesn't it feel like Victor is going to seek ice cold revenge against his entire family once he gets out of prison? Seems like he's barely disguising his attempt for them, or excuse me, disguising his contempt for them, all in order to get their testimony, then he will punish them once he's back in the leather swiveled chair. <laughs> Agree? <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it, Ellen, but I think that's a really good point. Nikki was warning the kids this week, like, he's forgiving me, but I don't know if he's going to forgive you. And then when she pressed Victor about their relationship, he did say something like, well, I might need some more time to get it to go back to, to, where, uh, to where it used to be. So I think you might be hitting on something there, Ellen. We might see Victor taking, sitting there in the courtroom, enjoying all of their testimony, letting them get him out of prison, only to rise back up victorious and bring down the sword. <laughs> uh, T. Nicole at YRChat.com says, I don't get how the Newmans, especially Nikki, is on, is on Phyllis, is on on Phyllis for not moving on and letting go of what Victor has done. I think they would feel differently if the same thing had happened to one of them as to what was done to Phyllis. Has Nikki forgiven Ian Ward and moved on from what he did to her when she was young? And how long ago was that? Yes, I know. I, I do have sympathy for Phyllis. She has been through something that is violating down to the core. And the fact that everybody kind of just expects her to forgive and forget is, in reality, it's not even something someone would, I don't think it's reasonable. Daisy on Facebook says, I know it's awful. But I would like Chelsea to get Chloe's daughter and keep her until Chloe gives her the diary pages. I want to see Chelsea uncover everything Victor and Chloe did to Adam. That would be a great ending to this storyline. And I do mean ending, please. Let this end soon. <laughs> I like that idea. That's a little kind of a dark, dark twist. I think we are absolutely going to see Chelsea being at the forefront of uncovering everything that's going on there. Who knows? She may work with Kevin. Uh, she may work with Dylan. I'm sure there'll be other people helping her, but we're seeing the rise of Chelsea. This is her opportunity to save the day, which I think could be good. And I agree. I kind of, I want, I'm ready to get past this. I hope we don't have to see Adam sitting in prison for too long for six months. Who was it? Phyllis even acknowledged it's been six months. She said, um, I don't think six months is, is enough to, um, you know, for justice. And I thought, you know, it literally has been probably about six months of watching Victor in denim. I'm done. <laughs> Gary left me a voicemail saying, Jack is such a patsy. He's also the victim. Why isn't he cheering the idea of keeping Victor behind bars? Good point, Gary. Yet another reason that I'm struggling to, to understand Jack right now. This is Jack's all-time worst enemy. You would think that he would want Victor there and 
only just out of pure spite, but because of Victor. What this whole thing happened because Victor was trying to get one up on Jack by replacing him with a twin. I mean, Victor had him sh shipped off with Ke with Crazy Kelly and kidnapped and tortured. I, it, it is ridiculous. Jack's whole perspective on Victor and the Marco situation doesn't make sense, which does lead some credence also to where Phyllis is. And this takes me into um, two more really good points. First, Connor at YRChat.com says, watching Phyllis these last couple of weeks, I think I know who she needs to choose, herself. I love her with Jack, but maybe at the moment she doesn't need to be with him or Billy. Why doesn't she choose herself? Get involved in a great business storyline and kick some butt. And then Jamie left me a voicemail saying, I wonder if we're looking at Victor, or excuse me, at Phyllis choosing neither B B uh, Jack or Billy. Not because she doesn't love them, but because she's broken. This could be a tale of realistic fallout of the assault by Marco because Marco is still haunting her. I really like both of uh, Connor and Jamie's points. It does kind of jog my sensitivity toward Phyllis and what she's going through. It's It's been a trauma for her and not only that but on top of it the fact that she feels misunderstood. She feels like Jack didn't support her and I think a lot of the reason that Phyllis was drawn to Billy in the first place was because he was one of the only other people in the world that said no it's not okay that Victor did this to you. I think that's what kind of connected them in the first place. So maybe Maybe as Connor and Jamie are saying, maybe it's not so much about Phyllis choosing Jack or Billy. Maybe it really is going to be about her choosing herself and to move on and to or to find a, a way to become at peace with this or or I mean or who knows continue to seek revenge. Uh, but whatever is going on with Phyllis is really about her and less about the two guys. Very good point. Um, Grenady and Candy on YouTube. I haven't heard from you in a while, I think. Uh, she says, I'm happy the Chancellor Mansion is being redone. I can't believe that this is actually happening, you guys. Uh, there, I mean, the paint is still on the walls from last week. Uh, they're doing swatches. We saw paint buckets sitting in the corner. This is happening. <laughs> We're actually, I think, going to redo the Chancellor Mansion. And judging by the color swatches, like yellow or beige, that seems appropriate. I cannot wait. Oh, my Please, I, I just, I, I am thrilled that this is something Lionar has responded to. The fans didn't like the remodel and they actually said, all right, you know, we don't like it either. Maybe this isn't right. Maybe this isn't true to the history of the show. Uh, and, and maybe they're actually deciding to, to do it for us and because of us. And that feels so great. Um, Lionar's 11,000th episode is coming up on September 1st and I, like, to get my news and scoop from CBS Soap and Soaps in Depth. Their website had a little slideshow showing the cast photos from over the years, starting with a, a very early cast photo. What was it, 76 maybe? Something like that. The cast was like a dozen people, and they were just kind of crammed into that Chancellor stairwell area that was always the same. I mean, looking back at that cast photo, um, it was, it, it's just, it's bizarre that it stayed the same from the 70s up until 2016 and then changed so drastically and I, I just, I understand needing to update the set but they didn't honor what it used to be and how important that was to, in, with, through the history of the show um, and so I'm really, I'm really hopeful that they're going to slowly get us back to something that just feels more honorable uh, to, to Catherine. You should totally go back or go to CBS uh, Soaps in Depth and look at the slideshow they did because it's really interesting to see the cast from the 70s and then how big it is now and it's also kind of a good flashback because I think they had maybe 10 photos of the cast and it was neat to see how it's changed over the years. It was, it was a good good thing to, to look at. 
Um, Shelly at YRChat.com says, just when I maybe, maybe start to like Ash Abby a smidge, she puts on those pathetic dumb eyes and says to Ben, well, Ben, or says, Ben loves kids and babies are so cute and cuddly and they solve all problems. <laughs> oh, Abby. Yeah, I know, Shelly. It was naive. It was very naive of her. I, I, I just feel for her, though, because I I think she's trying so desperately to do what she can to save her marriage um, but I mean yes I agree that there it's an incredibly naive statement uh, Sean at yrchat.com says I really want Abby and Stitch to try and conceive again I feel like that will make a very happy ending it just seems like Ben is afraid of having heartaches with his sister Max and the miscarriage yeah Sean I mean not only that but I mean if we think back to the history of, of Stitch's character he had that heartache uh, with his father too didn't he have to shoot his own father I mean this is a very tragic character contrasted with a character like Abby who is naive and who has had very little to struggle and to fight for in her life they're very very opposite they come from two very different places doesn't necessarily mean they can't make it work though I really want to get some comments and some opinions on Abby and Stitch this week so yrchat.com if you uh, still want to vote in the poll and let me know are you feeling Abby and Stitch right now is this a couple that should make it work Okay, everybody, that does it for me for this week, but keep those comments coming. As I mentioned, yrchat.com is where you can leave blog comments. You can also, from there, find the Facebook and YouTube and podcast pages, so you can leave your comments wherever you're most comfortable. If you like leaving voice messages, you can call my number at 309-588-4569 and leave me a little voice memo with your opinion on the show. And I'll be back next week to give you my opinion on the show and read some more comments and have some more fun. So everybody take care. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.